she actually left him and he has no idea where she is. This is a shocking revelation to Phyllis because Marcia and Donnie had always seemed to have such a great marriage. It was kind of shocking that she would just up and leave him and leave her house, which was very special to her. But surely if something was really wrong, if Marcia was in fact missing, her friends and family would have reported it to police, right? Well, maybe not. So let's talk about Marcia for a minute. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of background on her. Marcia Helen Brantley was born on a February 28th. 
Marsha begins getting her hair done by Kelly DeLude, and she really becomes someone who Marsha can kind of confide in. Like, she's very fond of her. She talks about her dogs a lot. She talks about her husband. By 2009, the economy was still struggling, and Donnie's business was very impacted by this. He just didn't have enough people needing his help, and so he's bringing in a lot less money than normal. Now, Marcia is still getting her hair done regularly, but they are having to make some financial cuts here and there to kind of make up for this loss in income. So in April of 2009, Marcia goes and gets her hair done, and everything seems totally normal. But this is the last hair appointment she ever shows up for. She just stops showing up and stops calling in. Martha published a blog post on May 10th, 2009, titled Star Trek, where she talks about seeing the new Star Trek movie with her husband. And this would be the last post she ever makes on her blog. So, months go by, and she never calls Kelly to make a hair appointment. She never goes into the salon. She's just gone silent. Kelly DeLude, her hairdresser, would be the first person to start raising the alarm that something was wrong here. But it would be six months before anyone would report her missing. I cannot wrap my head around this six months and her friends and family, like her husband. No one has talked to her and no one has seen her. So her parents are dead and I understand that and she has no siblings, but like a acquaintances or friends, people she sees regularly, nobody really notices that she's just gone. Now, Marcia does have this neighbor, Phyllis, who has noticed her absence, and she has actually tried to call Donnie when she cannot get a hold of Marcia, but the only phone number she has for Donnie is his business, like, landline. And his business has since crumpled and shut down, and that landline has been disconnected, so she has no way to talk to him. So this is when she finally goes over and finds out that Marcia has, according to him, left to go west. Marcia was pretty close to a lot of the members in her riding club. And at some point, they received this group email from her that says, like, she's going to be MIA for a while, but they might see her around town. I think this is really weird, but I'm guessing they all took it as, you know, I'm, I'm going to take a break from writing, but maybe I'll see you around. So I'm thinking that's what they must have thought. So after Phyllis hears what Donnie Brantley has to say, she calls Kelly, and they kind of compare notes, and they're trying to make heads of this situation. Marsha has never spoken badly about Donnie. She's never even hinted that there may be some problems in the marriage. So for her to just leave seems very odd to them. So Kelly, her hairdresser, ends up calling the Cleveland Police Department and she reports Marsha missing now. She is not a family member. She is not even a close friend. She is just a hairdresser who has realized her client is missing. 
Donnie there. 
say he needed these things for his business, but he had no business at this point. So then, Johnny up and moves to Georgia. He is getting out of Dodge. He just takes off. He doesn't even try to sell the house. He just leaves it. In 2013, Donnie is involved in a civil suit, so he has to go through this deposition process. And every time he is asked about Marsha, he pleads the fifth. More than 100 times during this deposition, he refuses to answer. He just says, on the advice of counsel, I plead the fifth. On August 26, 2013, Donnie was indicted by a grand jury and charged with a first-degree murder. The problem was this is a very circumstantial case. There's no body. There's no crime scene. There's no physical evidence. They don't even really have a motive. Like, they can't find evidence. The marriage was bad. His bond was set at $25,000 and his family immediately bails him out. The trial was set for May 14, 2014. But it never happened. Before the trial was supposed to start, all of the charges were dropped. The DA knew they needed more evidence to make a, like a slam dunk case, so they realized they were not ready to take this case to trial, and they dropped the charges. But then two years later, realize 
Later. Uh-huh. 